15.09. I need to go get the kids. You see, this school thing is a full time job, bro. <laughs> Now look at it if you have, you and your partner for example, have a child or children, how do you run you know, your finances, how do you get a job, how do you tie your career around taking care of your children and still making money or running your business. I would like you to pay attention throughout this video because towards the end whilst I'm going, I'm going to tell you fellow immigrant parents some um, benefit, child care benefits that you can have access to to help you take care of your children while you get to do other things, work and you know have personal time for yourself. Sub fam, hope you guys are good. So you see, you know what, come closer. I know that some of us are parents and this particular content, this particular video is from depth of my heart as a matter of fact it's close to heart because this is the stage in life i am in and i know that there are other people and other you know young persons like me who are going through the same struggle some of us here were raised in our home country and we know how things raising children is in our home country our children will be first generation so we are migrants right i really don't know how to categorize it but you do not have i said all of that to say that you're the one yourself who is the immigrant raising children in a foreign land in this regard we do not have parents we don't have access to parents to help to siblings who can help us run our children while we pursue our career it's a whole lot so i thought that i thought within myself that how about we share this experience yeah and give each other maybe like some encouragement one or some information that will help us make life easier so first of all, in general, raising children anywhere it is in the world is not an easy thing, especially the fact that there is no manual to raising children. As a matter of fact, it's worse raising children in a foreign land, and I'm speaking from experience, even from day one if you get to give birth to your children abroad, like someone like me. Let me just give you a background, maybe it makes it easier, so I talk, I don't, you know, go go about the bush too much so using me for example typical i was born and raised in nigeria lagos nigeria i migrated here to the uk as a student i have three children all of my children are born here in the uk so from my first child to my last child i never had omugwa you know what we call omugwa in my home country is where you have your mom you know or your mother-in-law yeah or you, you usually elderly women help you raise and nurture your baby because i mean you've never had this experience the entire after birth care that midwives do here the elderly mothers do it for you so but in my own situation i never had that luxury i did it from day one from the hospital straight just i and my partner now having said that I was learning everything fresh from the scratch as an immigrant mom with no help. At times I get to have conversation with my mom over the phone she tell me do it like this do it like that but there is only so much over the phone conversation can do. So now that the children have gotten to my children have grown my first child is six plus my second is four plus and my third is two plus she's gonna be three in December. So right now I'm waiting for my second child. Hi, Owen. Hi, Hi. Hi Look here. Look here. Come on, look here. So I'm going to say I've gotten a hang of this motherhood thing in abroad, yeah? Or this parenting thing here in the western country far away from home now graduating to the level of going to school these children normally start school i would like you to pay attention throughout this video because towards the end whilst i'm going i'm going to tell you fellow immigrant parents some um benefit child care benefits that you can have access to to help you take care of your children while you get to do other things work and you know have personal time for yourself and get productive right and remember the whole essence of this video is to give you an idea or let you know in case you're here in the uk or you're yet to come in or you're a single person or married or intend to have children yeah in the western country far away from your home country so this video will give you an idea of 
what it is like and what to expect. So the way it's structured here, yeah, children go to school from 9 till 3 p.m. When you have your baby, usually they are not, according to the UK educational system, children start school, proper school, that's reception at the age of four. Before then, whatever it is they do is more like nursery or daycare. Before we go into the details, let's talk about the challenges. Now, look at it if you have you and your partner, for example, have a child or children. How do you run you know, your finances? How do you get a job? How do you tie your career around taking care of your children and still making money or running your business? This is a very huge challenge because you do not have a mother, father, uncle, auntie to help you take care of your children while you go about your normal duties as it is you know, in our home countries. That's one. Secondly, finding the type of job that might allow you, that can allow, that can fit into your um, lifestyle, I mean your family life. As I mentioned, children go to school from nine till three. Yeah? No, tr now trying to, and they have to be dropped off in school and be picked up at 3 p.m. What type of job would you do on a Monday to Friday that will allow you be at work from say from 10 because you, you have to factor in distance, travel distance to work. So from 10 to say 2 is when you have to work until one of you, whichever parent, whether you're single, separated, divorced or, or being all together, how do you guys run these children? Because no matter what your relationship is between the father and the mother, you are supposed to co-parent your children. If you guys live together, you have to run these children. And however, so how do you do it? What some parents do is one person gets to sacrifice their career for some time and let the other person take on more of the, the working. For some persons, they share it. By the time you're going, I'm coming back. And by the time I'm coming back, you're going. Because somebody has to be at home to take care of the children. But you know one very beautiful thing now that helps some of us is hybrid working. So some of us are able to work from home for some days and then maybe go to the office for some days while sharing this responsibility with the other parents, whether you're the man or you're the woman. Another huge, I'll say annoying challenge you know, freezing children here in the West is you could just be called up randomly by your school's class teacher. Imagine when you have more than one child. So just be expecting call from either the teacher or that teacher or the other teacher. When they'll call you, oh, your child just had an accident. And by that, they mean maybe they wee on their body or something. You need to come and get them extra clothes or oh, this, da, da, da. Or just one random thing like that. You could just be called upon. And right there instantly, you have to drop whatever it is you're doing and report to the school. This other one, in fact, I just, I, okay, I'm not trying to, I'm trying not to sound so, see, let me just say my mind, okay, this other one, it tire me. What is it? Extra curricular activity, I mean extra school activities. 
they have swimming, they have basketball, they have football, they have, depending on the age of your child, gymnastics and blah. These are the things you have to do. You have to actively get involved. There's this thing they call class and um, dojo, yeah? I believe that's what it is for some other schools, but this is what they call it in my child's school, yeah, right? So this class thing, they always beeping you messages to always just be distracted. Let me tell you, I could just be on my computer and getting on to work, but due to the ever cumbersome buzz, buzz, buzz and notification from the children's school activity, it can be really overwhelming because when you think about it in comparison to back in our home country, you could just ask your help or your sibling or your parents yeah somebody to take your children to school whereas you jet out to your office and stay there till 8 p.m or whenever it is you finish and come back home and relax your children will get to do their homework or, the, or you something else school class teacher no sorry i'm after school teacher or something they like you don't do too much of that school work right but here it is you and you alone See outside. Cars are already parked. My back or my front to but those that were carrying with leg, people that are coming with baggy. Everybody rushing for school pickup. Okay, this this other one is really huge. Aside the fact that on a daily basis you have to do school run monday to friday you have to you cannot run away from it you're going to drop them you're coming back this particular one is big in terms of how challenging it is and i'm talking about when your children are less than the um you know the age or the acceptable age for starting school which is four years old and this is going to connect me to the benefits i said one is entitled to one can be entitled to as a mi migrant speaking of somebody who has no recourse to public fund somebody who's not a british citizen or who has a settled status yeah just a typical average immigrant so benefits and child care you can get to help you so back to what i was saying here regarding the child children who are less than school age so for children who are like three years and two years normally they cannot go to proper school they go to nursery and the nursery is not free but the good thing is the government here yeah, through the local council have provided financial support in terms of helping parents get onto their lives by offering this free child care of 15 hours for children who are between the ages of three to four because the new school year starts at September. So if a child is not up to four by September, a particular date in September, they cannot, you know, enter proper school. So let's say your child is going to be four by October, your child will still not enter reception, like start proper school. Whereas your child's mates who made um, four, in July or August or even the beginning of September can enter. You see, you see how stressful that is. Leave in the comment section if you have an experience with that. So in that case, they have that 15 hours between the ages of three and four. Okay, so what happens if your child is not up to the age of three or four? Speaking of a child who's two, normally there is no government provision for free 15 hours for children who are less than two, especially children of immigrants who have no recourse to public funds, yeah? But there is something I came across online on the um, childcare website, gov.co.uk, which I'll advise you check for yourself too, so you don't just take my information, you get the confirmation yourself. So I did see that some immigrants, I did see that some immigrants here can qualify, their children can qualify for that free childcare. Their children who are two year old can qualify even if they have no recourse to public funds. Now government can still give them free funding. Now let me tell you what I saw that is the clause attached to it. So they said if you're a non-UK citizen who cannot claim benefit and you have a two year old, your two year old can still get 15 hours funding but look at the clause attached. 
hear the clause. You must live in England and your household income must be no more than that. You will not earn more than these amounts I'm going to mention. So you're not going to earn more than more than 26,500 for families outside of London with one child. You cannot earn more than 34,500 for families within London with one child. You can earn more than 30,600 30, for families outside of London with two or more children. You cannot earn more than 38,600 for families within London with two or more children. In addition to that, you cannot have more than 16,000 pounds in savings or investments. I believe that could include maybe business investments or anything that yields money yeah and in all of this you have to contact your local council to confirm this eligibility criteria because they will look you they will look at your national insur insurance look at you know your earning your family earning if you're two whether if you're single they'll check you know you as a single parent and then if you're coupled or partnership whatever they'll check you know your household income to know if you guys qualify even as immigrants I hope that you know gives you some insight and that helps. So in general, yeah, some some of the things I've been able to infuse here and there to help me in my own home is you know eating less outside, like because cost of living is high, and the more these children grow, the more they eat. They even eat up to like four times a day. God damn! I thought I eat, but my children. <laughs> Mama, Mama, sit down. Okay, so eating, you know, cooking food, easy cook meals instead of maybe trying to fry egg every morning or do something very stressful for breakfast and lunch and dinner, it will overwhelm you, believe you me. You might really even not have time to do something else, right? So in order to be able to still be productive while running your children, it is best that you make life easy for yourself by maybe batch cooking or preparing foods that, you know, that last longer that you can stop in the fridge. Like I have this spaghetti recipe that my children totally love. Maybe one of these days if I, well, because in future I plan to do like a day in my life kind of video, but I'm looking for, I'm waiting for one or two things to set. You know what I'm saying? So like there's this my spaghetti um, recipe I was talking about. I make the spaghetti down and keep it in the freezer and then bring it out in batches um, heat it up in a pan and fry it like stir fry and just add mixed vegetables, curry, maggi and that's it. Lunch done ready for breakfast, standard bread and tea or cereal conflicts, yeah? So after, after in morning time, then we have the afternoon time, which is this one. And you have to get that time. Because even, like, they just thing about if you come late, they charge you for coming late it's crazy it's crowd. all of these people are people who have come to get their children from school apparently so yeah given that i have two children the first one is a smaller class that's over there yeah, and then the bigger one is in a higher class. That's where I'm walking down to now. So those ones are both our children in bigger classes. So they just arrange them according to their classes, different places. Yeah. This is obviously their garden area. Let me go get my son. How are you, Papa? Yeah, hope you had a nice day. I'm making a video of you. <laughs> hope today was good. Yeah? Turn now, look here, look here, look here. <laughs> oh, God, this wind. <laughs> Let's go get my younger son. And then for you know sanity and stuff, I try to reduce on the, I really don't have unnecessary too much extra, you know, school activities that I'm running up and down for, at least for now. And also I try to finish up my activities with the children and running the children early enough so I can have time to spend quality family time and you know do my own work. 
properly so i hope this video helps all the best to you guys who are parents like me <laughs> i'll catch you in the next video